Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to Channel BK. My name is Brian. Welcome to the final list of the year. But we're in the new year while you're watching this. What? Top 20 movies of 2019. You guys know I always do this. I always wait because I, you know, with certain movies coming out later and opening later, and I like to kind of give a couple days in terms of letting the movie sit with me and sort of figuring all that out. And, you know, it's going to be an interesting list because if you watch my worst movies of the year, I talked about how this year was very weird. Uh, other than the movies on this list and a couple others that didn't make it, it felt like a very meh year, in my opinion. I feel like a lot of people have been saying how great this year was. And to me, I, I'm not saying the movies on here are that, but other than the movies on here, it felt like it was a very easy list to put together because of the fact that it just felt like this year was missing a lot for me. Uh, but I'm glad everyone else had a good year with the movies. Uh, so again, I'm going to tell you some movies that I haven't seen or haven't opened wide for me here <clears throat> in Michigan. Then we're going to get into the list. I don't have any honorable mentions in terms of like runners up uh, like last year, or maybe the year before, just because like I told you. But I do have some surprises in terms of stuff that I'm going to do because guess what? I don't care because it's my list. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. But for, without further ado, let's get into it. So for the haven't seen movies in my honorable mentions, we have Amazing Grace, Under the Silver Lake, Portrait of a Girl on Fire, Just Mercy, and 1917. 1917 makes me very mad because I thought it was opening wide on Christmas, but it's not. So... Let's get into it. At number 20, we have a tie, ladies and gentlemen. These two movies, I have been trying to debate which one I like more. And I genuinely don't have one over the other. I think they're both as good as each other. And I know you're gonna, people are going to be mad at the first one. But I'm surprised that people didn't like it this much because I was like, I don't get... Like, I get if you don't love it, love it. And I don't think it's like the greatest movie of all time, but... I was so shocked how bad the reviews were, and that's Glass, the M. Night Shyamalan movie. I thought it was a great culmination of Split and Unbreakable. It definitely just had elements of those two movies, but it just felt like a huge, just bombastic action movie, and I personally loved it. I thought James McAvoy was great. Samuel Jackson was great. Bruce Willis was great. You know, every and all the kids coming back, everything about this movie I thought was dope. Again, it was a dope action sort of big blockbuster movie with some cool elements to it. I really liked it. But the movie that it's tied with is Ford v Ferrari because again, I'm not a big car guy, but I was shocked to see that I was interested in the car stuff, how they built the car, all the family stuff, and it was really 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 good. And you know, Christian Bale and Matt Damon were great as always and it was a very intriguing movie and I had a lot of fun with it. Uh at number 19, the Death of Dick Long. All I'm going to say about this movie is watch the trailer because it is a weird movie. And if you think it's interesting, go watch it because it, in my opinion, is a very odd concept that somehow balanced out the serious and the funny. The funny stuff had me cracking up. The whole time I'm like, this movie's hilarious. It is so funny. And one of the directors behind Swiss Army Man did it, so you should know that it's kind of in that vein of wacky and serious. So definitely give it a chance. But it's one of the most unique and fun movies I've seen, and it's hilarious. Hilarious. Number 18, we have Hustlers. Jennifer Lopez killed it. Killed it, killed it, killed it. This movie, when I first saw the trailer, I mean, when I rewatched the trailer, I was like, I guess it looked interesting. But when I first saw the trailer, I'm like, it just looked very like, eh, you know? But I think once the movie came out and it got all these great reviews and I saw it, it definitely had this really great tone to it. The stripping stuff I liked. I love the business stuff of it. Because again, I thought the movie was going to be very over the top. Like that was the whole thing. And I mean, I guess it was because that was sort of the style of it, but I was very intrigued with the story and a lot of the themes that are brought up, because it actually is a very dark and a very interesting look at that time in American history, so really into it. 17, we have Knives Out, the fun caper movie, uh, Who Done It from Ryan Johnson. Again, Ryan, stick to original movies, 
and you'll be good. Just stick to original movies and you'll be all right. This movie was great. The whole cast was fun. Daniel Craig, every time he does something with the Southern accent now, like I think that's just his new thing. He's hilarious. And again, it was just such a fun movie. Everyone was great. The writing was sharp. And it was just a fun ride from start to finish. And again, it was fun to sort of figure out again who, you know, everything going on. And it was really great. 16, The Irishman, the huge Martin Scorsese movie. It had me interested the whole entire time. I thought, you know, Pacino and Pesci and De Niro were all great. I thought it was intriguing. It was fun to sort of see how the film was built. Like, I just love the story of Robert De Niro through this whole time in history and sort of the run-ins with Jimmy Hoffa and all that sort of stuff. And it was very interesting. And obviously it looked phenomenal. I thought the CGI stuff they use on them was in, in, crazy. There's a couple little things I wish they expanded on here and there, mainly with his daughter. Uh, but other than that, I still thought it was a really great film. 15. Speaking of films that don't that aren't cinema, but it is cinema. Spider-Man Far From Home. God, this was a great movie. Jake Gyllenhaal at the my favorite current actor as my favorite Spider-Man villain. It's all I wanted and he was phenomenal and this movie was great. Spider-Man Homecoming was pretty good, but this Spider-Man movie had all that I wanted from the last one in terms of the Spider-Man stuff. And it was great. It made me laugh. It made me cry. It was really, really good. And a great, fun movie to follow up the craziness that was Endgame. At number 14, we have Booksmart. When I first saw this movie, I think I was on the hype train and thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. But honestly, once I watched it again, it was like, okay, it is still pretty good. Billy Lord is the highlight of this whole movie. But uh, this film is hilarious. I love, again, it's a film that has a lot of really good meaning to it in terms of the the themes and all that but it's very fun it has a lot of great humor all over the place it's very raunchy it's very stupid it's very just general funny like it's a really smart comedy um Jason Sudeikis has some great parts in it as well and yeah very good comedy obviously everyone's talking about it please see it if you haven't number 13 we have Pain and Glory uh Antonio Banderas phenomenal job. I feel like when I first saw this movie, I wasn't as into it, but I think I've sat on it and thought about it a lot more. Basically, the movie is a self sort of biography of the writer and director, and it's sort of following this guy who is older, and it just sort of follows all these moments about him dealing with the sexuality, actors he used to work with, all that sort of stuff. It's very hypnotic. Like, when I first watched it, I didn't fully grasp it and I don't know if it was just because I think I had to come to terms with the fact that the movie just feels like a piece of a piece of a piece but I really liked a lot of the elements in it because I think it really hit me more than it should have like I was very into it and yeah I thought it was really really good at number 12 we have Jojo Rabbit the new Taika Waititi movie this movie was hilarious this movie was really emotional I really liked it it felt a lot more serious than what I would have expected from Taika. Uh, obviously with the subject matter, but also with just the fact of I was surprised. Like his style is still there, but I was very impressed with what he was able to do seriously in this film. And I really liked it. Again, it was a, anything World War II I love, and I thought the cast was great. And again, it was it was also an interesting look in terms of that side of World War II because you don't hear about that that much with the kids being in the war. But yeah, it was really good. And at number 11, we have Joker, the most divisive movie apparently of the year. Here's the thing. I think it's good. Besides the scene when he's going down the stairs and the song is playing and he's dancing. Other than, I mean, the dancing stuff's fine, but the song was terrible. Um... <laughs> But other than that, I personally really think this was great. I think Joaquin was stellar, like incredible. I don't know, like it just surprised me that people were saying this movie wasn't as great as it was because I really think it is. Like I think this movie talks about a lot of interesting things and I like the vibe and the aesthetic of it. And again, like, I mean, there are a couple little things here and there that could have been changed up and whatnot, but I definitely think this was a very interesting film. So definitely, definitely worth it. In the top 10, we have Uncut Gems. 
The new Safdie Brothers movie, Adam Sandler's incredible, Kevin Garnett's incredible, everyone's incredible. Here's the thing, though. Fuck you, Safdie Brothers. I love you guys. I love Good Time. That movie was awesome. That was my, obviously, introduction to them. The last 20 minutes of this movie made me nauseous. I was in the car, and I couldn't drive because my hands felt like they were falling asleep, and my head was killing me, and I was shaking because of how anxious I was. This whole movie was like, okay, it's not as anxious as Good Time because that whole movie was anxious. And then the last 20, 30 minutes just hit you and you're like, God damn it. Oh, it was so annoying. But hey, it was great. It was really, really great. Number nine, we have A Hidden Life. This is the new Terrence Malick movie. And here, I have never seen a Terrence Malick movie. I'm going to put that out there now. I love this. I, it, I was emotionally invested I loved the drawn out scenes. Again, like from what everyone says about his movies, he's very, you know, atmospheric. He likes to just kind of shoot whatever. He edits a very certain way. It very much feels trippy. It feels like you're following this couple. Uh, obviously, if you don't know about it, again, another World War II movie about an Austrian um, farmer who doesn't want to side with the Nazis. And it's sort of taking a toll on him and his family and his village. And it's really emotional. There's a couple scenes um, near the first, like the, like the middle of the movie that really impacted me a lot. And it was a really gorgeous movie. And again, I am very excited now to go back into the rest of his films because this, well, from what I hear, this is probably one of his better films. But I was, th for the three hours, I was into it. It was great. Number eight. John Wick, Chapter 3, Parabellum. I love the John Wick movies. I think this is way better than the second one. Uh, I definitely think it's as good as the first one, but it does some cool world building. I love the action. Uh, all the side characters are great as usual. And again, it's just a great series. It's a great action series. And I think that this film made up for some of the lacking in chapter two, I feel like. I feel like this film did a better job at balancing a lot. And again, really, really good film. Keanu is the man. Number seven, uh, from what I'm seeing, I think this is my favorite A24 movie of the year, which is wild. Climax. Oh my gosh, this movie is one of the trippiest and most nightmare-inducing things I've seen. But it's so simple. It's really awesome but in a very specific way like it just it's it's one of those things where again it's a film that I don't think I would have ever seen Gaspar No I believe that's how you say his name I've never seen any of his previous work I've been wanting to but this film who give it a chance if you try it's it's very interesting and it's very I think it was very unique myself and it's it looks incredible too number six Dolomite is my name. This is a late edition because honestly, I did not know what to expect going into this movie, but I was blown away. I, you know, I knew it was based off a real person. And then when I was watching it, I was like, I don't think it is, but I realized it was. But I was not expecting the movie to be like the disaster artist. Honestly, like I've heard, because I don't go into movies knowing anything. But Again, it pulled at my heartstrings about making movies and this guy who seemed so just wanting to be there for the people and this, and, like he just felt like, it just felt like such a fun ride. In a way, I actually want to go watch that movie now, <laughs> even if it's kind of meh, but, and Eddie Murphy puts in an impressive performance, even though it is very fun and very, you know, la like funny. He, there's a lot of good serious stuff that he pulls out too. Number five, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the new Quentin Tarantino movie. Everyone's phenomenal, especially Margot Robbie for the one line of dialogue she has. <laughs> Joking aside, Brad Pitt is awesome in this. Leo puts in one of his better performances. This is easily one of the most Tarantino movies I think I've seen and that he's put out. It's super talky. The plot feels very vague, but it, it keeps you interested, and again, the soundtrack's great. Very interesting, and there's a lot of interesting tension in the movie, and it culminates into something that might let some people down, but I think if you accept it, it's great. So, again, really, really great job from, obviously, a great director and writer. 
Number four, Parasite. Oh, the movie everyone's talking about. This movie is as wild and wacky and crazy and funny and serious and dark as everyone's saying it is. Please check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, I've been a fan of Bong Joon-ho, obviously, since Snowpiercer. I love that movie. Okja is a good movie. This comes back to his phenomenal roots. And again, reminds me of something like Burning that I love from last year. This whole class struggle idea. A big year for, you know, fuck the rich people with this. Ready or not. Uh, there's another movie too. Oh, Knives Out as well. Um, yes, phenomenal movie. Please check it out. It's great. Structurally great. Everyone's phenomenal in it. Please go see it. How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World is at number three. The third How to Train Your Dragon movie at number three. Best animated movie of the year. I love it. It tore my heart out. I love these movies. I think this is easily like the most underrated animated trilogy out there. You know, everyone was talking about this year, Toy Story 4, and even though I thought it was fine, and I like to say it's the it's the best unnecessary movie, I think, this movie was phenomenal, like, amazing, and it ended in such an emotional, great way, love the story, you know, it's one of those films where, again, you kind of expect certain things to happen, but even when it does, it just fucking destroys you, but yes, How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World was great, I love this trilogy, I love these movies, and they're just awesome. Uh, number two, we have The Peanut Butter Falcon. One, easily the sweetest movie of the year. There's one storyline thing that kind of annoyed me. And if not, this would have been the best movie of the year. But Shia LaBeouf is a fucking genius. He puts in an amazing performance. Zach, who's the newcomer in this, is amazing. He is hilarious, but he's also just, you know, he has such a richness to him and such a beauty to him. Uh, Dakota Johnson puts in a great performance. Everyone in this movie is just so great. Freaking Yellow Wolf for like the two minutes he's in this is great. Thomas Hayden Church puts in a good performance as well. There's um other wrestlers in the movie because the movie is obviously about how Zach wants to become a wrestler and it's a fun sort of on the road movie. It has a lot of different vibes to it. There's like vibes of like mud in it. And you know like sort of some old school movies. And again it's just a fun but also a heartwarming film. That I think you should all check out. Uh, it's phenomenal. And at number one. Art of Self Defense. This movie has been my favorite since it's come out. It blew me away. This was the movie, I, if you guys saw in the last video, this is the movie that I wanted The Dead Don't Die to be. Smart, funny, doesn't hit you over the head, just amazing, just acting, amazing scenes, amazing writing. Jesse Eisenberg puts in a phenomenal performance. He kind of, again, he sort of plays what you would think of him, but he be, his character arc is incredible incredible. Imogen Poots is great. The guy from uh, Goal is great. Again, I don't know how to say his name and I don't want to butcher it, but Gavin from Goal, he's great and hilarious. This film, it, it deals with this idea of masculinity in a smart way. I didn't think it felt too over the top. And I feel like this is going to be a movie that the more I watch it, the more little things I'm going to notice. And again, it just from start to finish, this film was locked in perfectly handled what it was doing that's the end of my list guys i don't know why it took so long to say that but if any of these films are in your top films let me know in the comments below or do you have different ones let me know in the comments below if you liked please like and please subscribe thank you so much for watching these list videos hopefully channel bk comes back to a bigger sort of stance in the new year and i hope you guys check out my classic reviews next week but until then thank you for watching and thank you for tuning into channel bk Peace out, guys.